Winning two Academy Awards for Best Sound and Sound Effects, this Jean de Bont classic that was released in June of 1994 went on to gross over 10 times its $30 million budget. Keanu Reeves stars as a polite LAPD SWAT member who is challenged by a lunatic madman, Dennis Hopper, to prevent a city bus from exploding if it ever goes slower than 50 miles an hour. The ridiculous premise is unquestionably one of the most iconic action movie gimmicks of all time, executed here with just enough realism to make it believable, even if many of the individual stunts are entirely outlandish. The logical progression of events the passengers, cops, and Hopper takes in this film lend a great deal to the film's tight script, some poured lines of dialogue notwithstanding. The 116-minute thriller begins with an oft-overlooked and forgotten sequence involving a trapped and falling elevator car, packed with innocent passengers. When the bus that couldn't slow down makes an appearance, the movie kicks into high gear and never lets off the throttle. An excellent case study of edge-of-your-seat entertainment, if there ever was one. A few more blocks, you're gonna come up to a soft turn. I've got some units waiting for you there. They're gonna lead you to the 105 freeway. It's not in use, it'll be empty, you'll be totally clear. Got it. Keanu's acting ability is notoriously limited, but his frustrated shouts and grunts are situated well enough here, especially opposite Hopper in a few key standoff scenes. The same year he did Dumb and Dumber, Jeff Daniels turns in a serious role here as LAPD's bomb expert, often giving sage advice from the sidelines, remarking to his brazen partner, Guts will get you so far, then they'll get you killed. It's hard to believe now, but Speed was actually the breakthrough performance for future Academy Award winner Sandra Bullock, who plays the sarcastic Angelino, forced to step in and drive the rolling time bomb. Her flirtatious quips with Reeves anchor the fantastical plot, and their on-screen romance would lead to their eventual repairing in 2008's The Lake House. Hopper is remarkable as the nine-fingered villain. The veteran actor is unforgettable with his limited screen time, giggling to himself with maniacal laughter and teasing Reeves with his evil hostage situations. But one has to wonder how he's able to climb a subway car and fistfight our hero with a detonator in one hand and a thumb missing in the other. The other speaking roles, especially those of the bus passengers, are largely reduced to limited stereotypes, but Alan Ruck and Joe Morton do just enough to bring a bit of their characters to life. Commendably featuring practical stunts and model work in lieu of computer graphics, the visuals and speed are nothing short of gripping and incredible. In a scene where the bus has to conquer a 50-foot gap in the freeway, director DeBont actually jumped a bus over 50 feet in the air. Sharing parallels with Die Hard and many other great action movies of the 80s, this fast-moving adventure is certainly not without its faults. Much of the action and tension revolves around the crazy, unstoppable bus premise, and under prolonged scrutiny, the movie begins to fall apart quickly. The non-stop thrills and real-world crisis negotiating is presented with likable characters, incredible stunt work, and some extremely fun sequences. Speed. Intense, expertly handled, enjoyable escapism. Those are my thoughts, now let's see what you had to say about this picture in the YouTube comments. Speed on the rate matic an 8 and a 9. With several of you remarking this is a leave your brain at the door style film, everyone still applauded the action and suspense, ranking it a great. I grew up on films like this and I can't help but watch them over and over again. A simple concept executed here with such excitement and thrills, it's impossible for me not to love it. It's an awesome movie.